Over the weekend, Darrington Ramirez and his family were put through extreme distress because of false COVID-19 information that was being shared online. Ramirez's baby boy was sick in the Southern Regional Hospital, and like many other patients, was swapped for the novel coronavirus. He had asthma, he traveled with asthma, and he developed this cough over the weekend, and we took him to the hospital. So when we get there, uh, the doctor and the nurses, the first thing as they get there with their kind of symptoms right now, they feel like that is COVID-19. So they say all the symptoms here they show it, it, it towards that, right? So they said they have to run some tests on her and that's what they did. The baby's result was negative for the virus, but before the family received the official news from the Ministry of Health, this irresponsible post was made online. It claimed that a four-year-old baby boy from Sarui village in Stan Creek was confirmed as the first case in Belize. But that wasn't true. Ramirez and his family were easily identified because of information shared even about his job. That post brought on death threats and additional stress to the family. Darrington Ramirez says that it was tough to deal with. Somewhere, somehow, somebody posts up something that he it is confirmed that he has this um, COVID-19. Now, that gone viral. And that's where a, a panic starts with the family, with neighbors and different people where we come in contact with. And these allegations are very serious. People don't understand. When they do things like that, they put people's life in a jeopardy. Because I get certain calls where people, they talk about, oh, we are come down on the house because you know they spread this virus. First I get some, I know you know where they get my number from. They call me private and I have at least about six or seven private calls where well, we hear that you know, have the um, COVID-19 over there at Sarawi and we hear that you and your picnic and you know where the clown can burn down on the house where I'm for me to go out a road where I do this and now they had me on my guard you know that they would have me kill innocent people because I'm at home and you come and you look suspicious. I have a licensed weapon where I would do something to protect my family. So this that the kind of thing you go through when people don't have false allegations out here. You know, they don't have no idea whether they put you in. A, right? They feel like, oh, then they make headline news. They bring out the first news. When they don't know that the danger that they put our family in. A, right? So thank God that we are negative and I'm going to lock up myself now. He now cautions the public to be sensitive about what is shared online. He says that the public should practice recommended preventative measures during this challenging time and avoid adding panic and causing pain to already worried families. My advice to these people who are doing these false, you know, rumors and things is stop. Because it, you know, nothing nice. You don't know the pain we're going to put the person too and if you make him be me, if you be the first case, you know, I, I was traumatized, you know, I, I, I frightened my, my family, everybody. And I get well we a cop call from one of my brother saying that why you not see this thing where they're wrong for Facebook right now? Oh they said a confirmed case about about your son here yeah, and so and that right there spooked me out. You know, it affect the little kids ne, a lot because I have four more kids. I have nephews, nieces, where they're wrong, where they hear ne, talking. And I listen to them amongst themselves. They tell each other, oh, we are dead. And they're very, it, it, it spooked me out, you know? So, yes, it was very, very sad and, and, and painful that, you know, my little boy, they're ready to punish. With me, one different sickness than this um, COVID-19 and people going and, and, you know, say these rumors. Today I feel much better, the results are out and thank God for that, you know, and I pray for other families and, you know, everybody follow the, you know, the, 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 the protocol, you know, wash your hands, stay inside and Hopefully this thing pass away one day. The false information caused the Ramirez family a great deal of stress over the weekend and should serve as a caution to persons posting and sharing inaccurate information online that can endanger lives. 
When the first case was confirmed today, persons online rushed to try to identify the individual. Across the world, public health officials condemn this act. They say that keeping coronavirus patients anonymous is critical to battling the outbreak. To reveal the identities of people that are alive who have contracted the coronavirus can have far-reaching implications. While the novel coronavirus is a pandemic, health officials will not out patients for many reasons, including that it violates confidentiality. Jeffrey Kahn, the director of John Hopkins Berman Institute of Bioethics in Maryland, told the USA Today that, quote, whether it's HIV, syphilis, coronavirus, or anything else, people simply won't show up to their doctors if they feel they might be outed for a condition, end of quote. Reporting for News 5, I'm Andrea Polanco.